showing concerns they are bypassing questions from journalists or not being transparent with you, the public. And in our promise to present multiple perspectives on the issues that impact you, Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen takes a 360 look tonight. I want to share some information with you, the citizens of Douglas County. This video posted on the Douglas County Sheriff's Office social media had never been seen before. An edited version of events from the night Douglas County Deputy Zach Parrish was shot and killed. But this post represented a shift for many journalists and open government advocates who were denied access to this video until after the sheriff released his version. Was this an effort to control the message? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I would say that. Yeah, I control the message in the sense of... Um, quantity of information was so important to make sure that I got out. Yeah. You see that? He controlled the information. Controlling the narrative is what they do. To my community, what had happened. Douglas County Sheriff Tony Spurlock says social media has become a way to directly communicate with the community, sharing information instantly, instantly. and managing how the story is presented. Taking a 360 view. We have these laws about open records um, for a reason. Associated Press reporter Kathleen Foodie has been looking into the increase in law enforcement using social media. Now Officers dancing and viral videos were just the start. Now she says in some recent examples after deputies were shot, Law enforcement directed journalists to social media, bypassing questions in early press conferences. Doc, can you hear me? While she says the Douglas County video does not appear to inaccurately portray the shooting, in other cases there are questions about transparency. In San Antonio, a newspaper discovered that a police department video featuring 911 calls actually included a fake call. And that's a pretty innocuous example. But... Fake calls. So... If they have fake calls, then who's making them? You see the little tricks they play? Now, these people control the narrative. They, they send this information out over social media and through these apps. This is what I'm trying to warn you guys about, T.I.'s. This is what they're doing and using. This is how they're doing it. They're using social media and apps. I it demonstrated this larger point that when the agency is in control of the information and they need to be really transparent about where it's coming from. Looking at another viewpoint, Denver police say social media is just another tool to help the media. It serves the media also to put things on social media. If we put on a picture of a missing person, then you're able to get out your platforms quicker and it serves the public. Legal analyst David Beller says law enforcement has the right to keep certain information private and to tell their story. But the public will decide how much tolerance they have if that story is one-sided. It is happening all across uh, branches of government. The effort to try to control the message, control the narrative, and do a run around the media. And open government advocates and journalists are watching, and this is why it's never been more important to make sure the information you get is accurate. We want to hear what you think. You can go to ours. Is accurate. So if they control the media, they control the internet, they control the apps, this is why you're being gang stalked. They control it all. Fake news. With a little bit of money and some fake news, you'll be gang stalked to the day you die. Deep fake? Roger that.